we are now learning in this moment we're concluding God willing today this uh, this Hasidic discourse of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that he said in 1975 and the Rebbe is trying to tell us to, to bring it a little bit closer to us how there can be this idea of the future redemption and that the whole entire world is going to change drastically for the good. And what is good? Who knows what? Everybody thinks it's going to be for the good. What does it mean for the good? That man will be more healthy in body, in spirit, in soul, in, in a potential and abilities. There'll actually be peace in the world. There'll be value to life. There'll be value to every moment. Time will be precious. No one will get bored. Time won't be our enemy. And there won't be disease. There won't be wars. Place won't be our enemy. You can't go there. You can't go here. And people won't will be our friends. There won't be people. We have to watch out for that type of person. Watch out for this person. But even more, we'll, not only we will learn, these things will not be threatening to us. Time and space and people <clears throat> and life, but it'll be uh, happy, wonderful, put, uh, 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 <clears throat> how do you say, positive. We'll be looking forward to every moment, looking forward to every instant of life. We'll feel the miracle, we'll feel the challenge, and we'll feel the creator, that we're actually doing something for the creator. Okay, that's what the future redemption is going to be like. I'll just give a small example. I was talking to somebody last night. Here we can see that a person in this world, what, what are the values that are presently available in this? What do people live for? Right? What do people live for? Very few people live for honesty. <clears throat> Very few people live for appreciating others. Right? People live for themselves. There's the... And the, the true altruism is almost not found at all. Almost, and if it is, nobody knows about it. It's certainly not in the newspapers. That's not an exciting thing that a person was honest. <clears throat> exactly the opposite. Now what's valuable is success. A person is successful. Some people are behind. The, they don't want everybody to know why they're successful. They'll see what type of nefarious people they are. But what about, what about things like courage, right? Courage. All these people that are, they receive, I watched a long series of series of, of people that, that received the Medal of Honor. And all of them said, the ones that died, they were the real heroes, right? There's this book by Viktor Frankl. He said, the real heroes, the real, the best people, they were the ones that died in Auschwitz because they were honest and they were helpful to others and they gave their piece of bread to someone else and they, they protected someone who was getting beaten. Or the, <clears throat> they lived according... Okay, so according to our standards, right, what's really valuable success? After a person dies, what's left of his success? Nothing. And even if there is something left, what does he get out of it, right? Supposing that there is no life after death, so what does he get out of it, right? And even if you, and even more, if you want to say that there is such a thing as heaven and you go to heaven, you get these eternal rewards, <clears throat> but still very selfish. Is there anything outside of selfishness? Is there anything outside of selfishness? Here, the Rebbe is trying to tell us that selfishness, in a way, is our problem, right? You get these Eastern religions, give up yourself. It's the biggest ego trips in the world because you're just doing it for yourself, that you receive nirvana, you receive. So is it possible to live in the pure standards of God? In other words, you're not interested at all in what you receive. You're just interested in being who you really are, living a life of truth, appreciating your creator appreciating every moment of life, appreciating helping others, making the world a better place. So that's why God gave the Torah. In fact, that's why God created man. And as soon as man, the first man, opted out to be an egotist, as then the whole thing started crumbling down. And the first person to realize that egotism and going to heaven and, and saving yourself is not the game, that's not it, was Abraham. And Abraham was the first one to fix up 
the, what's called the sin of Adam, Abraham. And he passed this thing down to Yitzhak and Abraham, that every moment is a gift from God. And we can't claim that it belongs to us. And if you do, you can. I mean, you, you can if you want to. But that's not the whole point of life. The whole point of life is not success. And here you have, you know, Genghis Khan and and the, you know, the the whatever is Nebuchadnezzar and the, and the, the, all these people. They rule the whole world. So what? What do they get out of it? They rule the whole world. They had anything they wanted to, everything they wanted to, all the time. But they couldn't stay awake long enough. Napoleon, these people. So they got everything. So what did they get? You know, what did they get? Suppose did they really make the world? You know, a better place, a loving place. We see the, the, the state of the world now, <clears throat> right? Where the, where the, it's, it's, the world is, is and, and presently, it's just in, a, in an insane state. You know, life is va- basically worth nothing. Life is not worth nothing. And then they're, and you're, you're, they're trying to, to, how do you say, turn your attention from, you know, the main issue, which is values, to stupid, ridiculous values, right? They're, they're in the world. Who knows what the values are nowadays? You know, basically the values is just, you know, have, have pleasure, who knows what. So, and it's even, it used to be that you can have pleasure, but not at anybody else's expense. Now it's at every, the people's expenses also. <clears throat> so, the, here the Rebbe is trying to tell us, that's the future redemption. The future redemption is that people are going to really, the whole world is going to change. <clears throat> that people will be interested only in what does God want. They're not going to be interested at all in <clears throat> what they personally want. Everybody's going to check out as if what they want is in harmony with what God wants. That's what's called in language Hebrew or bittel. <clears throat> bittel, surrender to the creator. How do we know what God wants? That's what the Torah is for. <clears throat> and we can see how many, how few people really appreciate the Torah and the godly aspect of the Torah, right? These other religions are based on changing the Torah and it's been going to heaven, you go to heaven. <clears throat> that's totally not what the Torah is about. That's that's taking the Torah and making it into this big ego trip. So how, says the Rebbe, but how are we gonna have the power to change this? So it says, that's the idea of Nisan and Tishrei. Nisan and Tishrei. Nisan means that God does everything. God does the whole thing, everything. Tishrei is that we do everything. God created us because he wants us to do everything. He put the whole world in our hands. The whole world is in our hands. So who's going to do it? We are God. So first of all, the Rebbe says it's going to be a combination. It's going to be a unification. How every deed that we do now, it's all in our hands. But every deed that we do now has the miraculous power, even though we don't see it, has the miraculous power of God going out of Egypt. Every deed that we do now to, only for the sake of the creator of the universe and not for our sakes, not for my own success and not for my own this aggrandizement and that. <clears throat> every, every deed, every thought, every word that's now done, a commandment that's done, whatever, for the sake of God, a good deed that's done only for the sake of God, only for the sake of the creator of the universe. Is that something eternal? Th- those deeds that we do now, especially the Jewish people, because the whole world is in the hands of the Jews. <clears throat> when a Jew does a commandment, when a Jew does what God wants, when a Jew does what it says in the Torah, we have absolutely no way of appreciating the good effect that this has on the world. I, we don't see it necessarily. We don't see it. We believe it. It has the power of God. I mean, listen, there's a lot of people that don't believe at all that God did anything, that God took us out of Egypt. You know, they're, they're, they have the right to believe whatever they want. Going out of Egypt was just a, was made up by people. It was just a metaphor. It wasn't a this, right? The fact is, every time we do a deed now, a good deed, what God wants, we learn Torah, we, we do a commandment. You do the commandments as they are in the Torah. Jewish men, women, we're talking about Jews. When they do what God wants, it makes an improvement in the world that's indescribable. And it's true the Jews have been doing these commandments since the Torah is given 3,000 years ago and the world is still in a terrible state. Okay, that's God's business. That's not our business. We have to have belief. Just think for one second, and we're going to get to the Bible, just think for one second. Abraham was promised by God that he was going to get the land of Israel 
and that his children were going to be like the stars of the heaven and they were going to be as many as the sand on the sea and etc. And he didn't get either one of them. And his son Yitzchak also served God every moment of his life with total self-sacrifice and he didn't get anything. And Yaakov, the same thing. And Mo, and 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 um, <clears throat> Yosef, jo, Yosef did the same thing. And there's a, a mimer by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe says that Abraham brought God's presence from the seventh heaven down to the sixth. In other words, he didn't see anything. And Yitzhak from the sixth to the fifth. And other words, it was all spiritual. They didn't really see any different change in the world. Moses was the only one that he actually brought the Torah, brought God's revelation to the physical world. He did it to everyone. And now it's up to us to do. But all these Jews, Judaism is based on all these people serving God and receiving absolutely no uh, no results, no visible results. I mean, don't get me wrong, there is such a thing as heaven. There is such a thing as going to heaven, but that's definitely not our goal. Okay. So now the Rebbe is trying to tell us what, how is this possibly going to be? First of all, number one, our deeds that we do now have this incredible power to them of going out of Egypt. Number one. Number two, the world was created. The world was created. The world concealed God. God wanted that to, to be that way. But that was the that was the, the deed, the thought behind creating the world, the inside of the world. The world was, the world was created in Tishrei. <clears throat> that we do all the work, but the thought inside of the world, and there's in every atom of the world, is to, is Nisan. God created the world in order that it would be revealed his essence in the world. He created the world in order that. And true, it's a world, and it's very difficult, but nevertheless, that's yeah, we have to be heroes. We have to stand against all the odds. That's what a hero is. And true, we might not see anything, but at least we believe that it is having an effect. <clears throat> now, one thing, of course, that helps this belief that we have is if we start contemplating a little bit about what God is and really what is keeping us alive, and if these words that the Rebbe's are saying is if it's really true or not. And if it is true, then the implications are very, how do you say, very inspiring and very, um, uh, how do you say, the word inspiring is a better word. <laughs> anyway, very emotional. This is not the word I wanted, but very emotional. You realize how good God is. You have a tremendous love for God. You realize how awesome God is. It's a, a fear of God, a healthy fear, like the fear of not driving on the wrong, wrong side of the street. <clears throat> yeah, you realize how merciful God is to us, how amazing, it's just awesome. So that puts the whole thing together. This is all going to be revealed because of our deeds and because our deeds have the power of the infinite and because the world was created and only in order to reveal the infinite. So therefore, it's not so hard to believe that there's going to be this big change. <clears throat> I mean, it, 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 so, it sort of comes out to be the opposite. <laughs> as soon as you realize how <clears throat> probable and, and necessary, and if you want to say easy and accessible is this future redemption, so it sort of makes you crazy. Why isn't it happening? What's going on? You know, why, why isn't, why is the world so, why is there so much pain and, and confusion in the world? Why, what, what's going on here? It's totally not understandable, but we have to just, uh, what, <clears throat> some things are not in our hands. Tess, Hine, you do it, it is known. The Briata Olam, the creation of the world. Bekof hey Elo on the 25th day of Elo, right? The world was created. God started creating the world <clears throat> five days before he created man. Man was created on the sixth day of creation. <clears throat> Six days before he created. Man was created on the sixth day of creation. That was Rosh Hashanah. So five days before on Kof Hey Elo, the 25th day of Elo, God started creating the world. Kof Hey, this is the, these are the words ko. Ko means something like this. All the prophets, the prophesied, they said, Ko Omar Hashem. This, something like this is what God said. Something like this is what God said. So the world was created on 25th. 25th means something like this. In other words, 
the, the reality of the world is something like the reality of God. It's something like real reality. When man was created, which that's the first day of Tishrei, then man started to fulfill the purpose why God created the world. In other words, serving God, elevating the world, using the world properly. And he started to reveal the creator and the creation. That's the level of Zen. Zen is also how Moses used to prophesy. Zen Hadavar, this is the word. Zen means this, not something like this, to reveal true godliness in the world, true creator. But this revelation that was by means of Adam, this was much less than the revelation that was in Mount Sinai. When God revealed himself in Mount Sinai, that was an infinitely greater revelation. The world was created in order that the Torah would be given in Mount Sinai. I'll be according to this. If so, there's so we have so far three levels of God revealing himself. Ko means something like this. Ze means this is God. And in Mount Sinai it was even more of a Ze. It was more pure godliness revealed. According to this, yesh lomar, we can say the zesha Torah that this was the Torah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that was the chodesh hazeh lechem. That that which God said, a chodesh hazeh lechem. He said that's the first commandment of the Torah, right? The first commandment given to the Jewish people in the Torah in the third chapter of Exodus. A chodesh hazeh lechem. This is the, that's the name of this mimer. That's the name of the Mimer. Achodesh is lachem. Nisan is to the Jewish people. Nisan, that's Achodesh. This month of Nisan is to you. Who penimu? This is the inside, the soul of Breshid Bora. The soul of the creation. The world was created in Tishrei, but the soul of it, the, the thought of creating, it says it was God was in Nisan. That's the revelation of God, which is imbued in every atom of the creation. God wants to be revealed. Therefore, this this is even higher. I'm sorry. is even higher than this. Why? Because tshuva of man, he but often the beligavul is in unlimited. The tshuva, it's we said when when a person does tshuva, it's even higher than the Torah. <laughs> Key because a chibur the beligavul, the joining of unlimited and limited by means of tshuva. What do we say tshuva is? Returning to consciousness, to, 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 to returning to be connected to God. That the adam who both in the beligavul. This is. Unlimited. I'm sorry. Because this tshuva of tshuva of man, he it is lamaila above miagbala is limit any limitations. Who This is the revelation of the infiniteness of the Torah and the commandments in the world. Kamoshehi bedargat like it is in the way of zet. Okay, again, so man was created, the world was created. The world was created, that's a big miracle. Man was created, that's a bigger miracle. The Torah was given, that's even a bigger miracle. When man uses the Torah to return to God, that's even higher. That's even a higher level. If so, it comes out that this sentence, what God said to the Jews before they left Egypt, this month is yours. That means the month of Nisan. The month of Nisan is the month of miracles. The ability of every Jew to take the entire world and reveal in it its true 
godly potential. The fact that this Achodesh Hazeh, this miraculous month, is the panemius, that's the inside, the soul of Bereshit Bora, this means revealing the believable, the infiniteness of Torah and the commandments in the world. Joining the infiniteness of Torah, Achodesh Hazeh, joining it in the world which is created in Ko, Kaf He. Kamoshu, as it is in the level of Kohe, Kaf He. In other words, when God gave the Torah, as it said that the world changed drastically, at that point, the Jewish people couldn't take the revelation. It was too much. It was like being in the Holy of Holies. When God put himself in the world in a permanent way, in the Holy of Holies, it was that revelation was only in, possible in one little room and only in one little time of the year on Yom Kippur and only for one person that was the revelation on Mount Sinai but when the Jewish people they returned to God that means we, that's talking about revealing this essence of God everywhere in the whole co in the whole entire creation in all of Tishrei <clears throat> that's that's the ultimate revelation that's higher than the creation of the world it's higher than man it's higher than the giving of the Torah that's the future redemption that's going to be by means of the Mashiach that all of the Jewish people have this amazing power that they can actually defy all of nature, return to God, and then transform all of nature. But this is all done totally with the help of God. Totally. That's the thing of Nisan. Miracles. The Yeshlam, we can say, the Giloy there, this revelation, yeah, <coughs> will be Be'ikr mainly Be'ha which will be in the future redemption after the Jewish people do this tshuva at the end of the time of the exile. In other words, right now. So just to take a, a brief, a brief look at the state of the Jewish people now, right now in the world, right, what it is. In the inside, I, I want, I think that the situation of the world now is exactly the opposite of what it was in the time of the temple. In the time of the temple, everything was pretty good. There were prophets, there was the temple, there was revelation of God. People could do all these amazing commandments of bringing the sacrifices and things that we can't do now. We don't, we don't even understand what the purpose of them is now. You bring an animal to the, to, well, how can an animal be holy killing an animal? Back then you could feel it, but inside everything was not right. That's why the prophets came along. There was hatred. There was idolatry. There was says there was murder. There was the licentiousness. How do you say decadence? Decadence. That was all being covered over on the on the. It was the the veneer, the surface. Everything was really good. Right, God. And, uh, <clears throat> nowadays, I think it's exactly the opposite. On the surface, things are really terrible. I mean, just they're really terrible. Where the Jewish people are. And the, the whole idea of, you know, Medinat Yisrael and, you know, just everything is permissible. And, and even where the religious people are, not to go into terrible details. That's on the surface, but underneath, everything is healing up. I see, I go around, I see. It's healing up. The people who you might think are totally non-religious, they're putting on tefillin. A lot of people, they keep Shabbos. A lot of, and they do it not because of religion. They do it only because... They personally, there's no peer pressure. They go against peer pressure. They do it only because they really believe that this is what God wants. <clears throat> they don't do it because they're afraid of going to hell because there's a lot of commandments they don't do. They do it only because this is their connection to God. Underneath, people want, they want pure godliness. They're not interested in going to heaven. They don't care about hell. They just want the truth underneath, despite the efforts of the Israeli government to, 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 to make everybody crazy with these missionaries and other things, despite all that, and arming the, the every day there's another, right, the whole country is open in front of terrorists, 
They encourage bloodshed. Shem, God forbid. Yesterday there was five people killed for absolutely no reason. Right? And okay. Anyway, nevertheless, here the Rebbe is saying that underneath everything is okay. As soon as the Jewish people catch on and they return their consciousness to, to the creator of the universe, then the whole world is going to be improved. The Gile said this as it says, the Aliyah de Gile, the believable, that by means of revealing this infinite help that God gives to each and every one of us, the infinite blessing that God gives to each and every one of us, when we just turn to the Creator, be, the, will be revealed the infiniteness of God Be'olam in the world. Kamoshahu as it is in the level of Zeh. Zeh, this is man. Like when God created the first man. Ali de Chuba, by means of Returning to God, we want to call it repentance. Returning to God, at the time of the end of our exile now, and not only that, the Rebbe pointed out that how can all the Jews all of a sudden return to God? He said the Torah promises us; they have the power of the Torah. They have the power of not just the Creator, but the reason for the creation is inside of every Jew, making waking them up, right? Like waking somebody up from a coma. By means of that, that all the Jewish people return to God, Yeah, will be afterwards immediately. Hagili, the revelation of the believable, God's infiniteness also in the world. Kamoshahu, the world as the world is in this level of ko, concealing God. And as the world will remain a world. The world will not all of a sudden change and everybody's going to be, you know, the suddenly spiritualized and they'll have just you know, glowing eyes and halos around their head and floating around. It's not going to be, there'll be, the world will be exactly the way it is now. But there'll be pure godliness revealed in every detail. Zeh, pure godliness, will be revealed in ko, in something like this. Zen, by means of this, Tushlam kavana will be completed the intention why God made the world. He wants to have a dwelling in this low world. And a lower world is nothing lower than it. This is also included in the fact that Nisim Atidim Legael. This is included in the fact that in Nisan, the month of Nisan, let's see, we've got to go back to the, this, back to the drawing board. One minute. Yes. That in Nisan we are going to be redeemed. What does it mean? That we are going, the Jewish people are going to be redeemed, that the whole world is going to be redeemed. This is talking about the redemption, the future redemption, which it comes after all the Jewish people turn to God, and they'll all turn to God because godliness is already imbued in their personality, just like a normal person is conscious, right? And a person that's in a coma is not a normal person. But if everybody's in a coma, it seems to be normal. There has to be one person that somehow or other can wake everybody up. But the, 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 the ability to wake up is inside of each one of us. And so it's going to be in the future redemption. Suddenly, everyone's going to wake up. The Rebbe once had a, a speech where he asked the question, why do people sleep? If the purpose of life is just to serve God. So when you're asleep, you can't serve God. So why is sleep? Why, instead of people living for 120 years, and uh, the one quarter of the day, of each day, everybody sleeps, right? Everybody sleeps. So instead of doing it that way, why not, why not make it that people just live, you know, take away the sleep, just live, not just don't go to sleep. You know, everybody should just live whatever it is, 80 years. And that's it, you know? People live 80 years, that's pretty good. And then one third of the life, whatever. People live 80 years, 90 years. And then you cut off the, the 30 years of one quarter or the 40 years, whatever, the one third. <clears throat> so what's wrong with that? That'd be pretty good. So, the, I mean, there's absolutely no purpose to sleeping, except that it provides, uh, you know, a livelihood for, for people who make beds and pajamas and things like that. So they'll, they'll find another way to make a living. So the Rebbe said the reason people wake, go to sleep is because when you're asleep, 
you think that that's reality. And when you wake up, you realize that although you were certain that you were that was reality, suddenly when you wake up, you realize, oh, I guess I was wrong. It wasn't reality. And maybe you can extrapolate from that that maybe what we're doing now that we really think this is real reality, maybe this is not so real reality. Maybe we can't. Maybe there's a reality which is much, much more than this reality. Uh, than this reality. So some people say, oh, yes, going to heaven. So, you know, on that you say that that's also could be a dream. Maybe there's an, a reality which is infinitely more real than that. And that's what the Rebbe is saying here. There is. That in this physical world, when, when the pure purpose of God is revealed in the world, <clears throat> then there'll be true reality. True reality. And unlike the way it is now, there won't be any sadness and difficulties. And that's what it means. Shagam <clears throat> agilui. That also the revelation. Be olam. Also, the revelation in the world <clears throat> that will be the Hagula in the future redemption, yeah, Nisan. It will be in the way of Nisan. This is the future redemption is going to be a Nisan or a believable, infinite awareness of the creator, infinitely greater than anything we can possibly comprehend in this world or in the next. which is totally above any of the worlds, totally above heaven revelation of God, this revelation will be in this world, in the panemi of the olam atzmo, in the, every fiber of this world. The same way nowadays, you're in the grocery store and you understand that if a thing costs 70 cents and you pay a dollar, you get 30 cents back, it's pretty obvious, right? You get it? That's the way godliness is going to be understood in the future. That's the way godliness is going to be understood. Just like in this world, you understand you drive on the proper side of the road, right? If you're in England, it's the left side. And if you're in, you know, in America, it's the right side. Also, people understand automatically to do what God wants is a good thing. To refrain from what God does prohibits is also a good thing. People automatically want to do what God wants. It'll be a good, healthy world. Then it will be a true redemption. The creator will be revealed in the creation al yadeh by means of the Mashiach Tzikenu, the Mashiach, who is the Rebbe. The Rebbe is telling us all this. this here we're reading the words of the Mashiach. The core of Mamash, it should be immediately now. Good. Finish the Sicha of the Rebbe. Very good. We didn't finish it, actually. Now we have to <clears throat> be inspired by it and actually fulfill it. Doing what the Rebbe said. Doing all that we can to make the essence of the creator revealed in the creation. Now, let's learn, let's see how much time we have. Let's go to do the Dvar Malchut. Here we go.